Welcome back to Mastering Kinder Master Custom Intro Part 3. You probably noticed it was a different intro. I made it super Hollywood style to emphasize the connection of ears and eyes. I'm going to teach you all about keyframing so closely to make something that's really Hollywood style like you just saw. Now, like, subscribe, join me on the other side to really learn about extreme keyframing and wrap up your own cool animation. I will see you over there. So here's what the complete project looks like. A lot has gone on since version number two, but I just want to show you a lot goes in a small space and reminders of how to get around here is that we zoom and we are always conscious of what the time is, but once you've got your letters cut up, you can actually use the fact to navigate that when you touch on something in KineMaster, that it's going to navigate to there. Now let's back up to this view a little bit. So you'll notice is that we have everything kind of lining up on the lines of the letter cuts. And so as we make our animations, we're gonna use those to get to the right place that we wanna go. If you are basing it all on music cuts, KineMaster also will fast forward to the music cut that you touch on. And so you'll get yourself lined up properly by tapping on an object that you want to work with. You can use the bookmarks menu, but I think once you have your basic stuff cut up, it's easier actually to use this tap methodology. All right, let's start talking about animation. First off, we've got background animation. Now, this is really important. You may or may not have noticed it, but it keeps the viewer interested, makes excitement without actually being the primary animation. Now, look, the trees are actually moving in and out. And this is really easy to do just using your uh, clip, pan, and zoom that is built in there. And it just went from heavy zoom to a zoomed out. So that is the far background animation. There's also two other background animations in there. And there's two stickers that I have animated. There's the fire flight, which is these little sparkles that are in the background. And then in addition, sublime sparks are the fire that kind of comes from the bottom going up to the top. Now we're going to talk about keyframe animation in a second, but just this idea of having some background animation going on is super important, I think, to make a look and feel of something that catches the viewer. Let's talk about another animation you may or may not have realized, but these black items are just black sound triggers that are literally 0.2 seconds long that happen with every one of the drum hits. Now these are just a 67% or 66% alpha opacity. There's no actual animation on them. They're just so tiny, they show up and they go away and it triggers our brain, our eyes, and our ears. Thump, thump, thump. You don't have to use them, but it makes a really cool effect that connects our all of our visual and auditory senses. So that's another form of our animation, and you can see them on each of the triggers on each of the bookmarks placed in there. Now let's talk about keyframe animations. Keyframe animations are applied to any layer and they can change the position, size, scale, or rotation of that layer. The most obvious ones in this example are the sparks that kind of draw out the letters as they go along. The M in the beginning is keyframed as well, so I'm going to show you how this works, but when you select on one of these, stretch it out, you'll see little red dots in there. Those are the keyframes that are for that particular piece of the animation. Each of these are done by hand. Now, rule number one, so you don't get frustrated and this can really tie you down. You want your layers to be timed and placed correctly before you put your keyframes because you do not want to trim or split a keyframed layer and you don't want to change the length of a keyframed layer. I'm not going to explain how hard and weird it is, but you want to get your things in place before you put your keyframes in it. I've removed the stickers and now I'm going to add them for you. Now something about stickers is I'm going to add the Sublime Spark right here and I've got it because they started on the A. Now a nice thing about stickers is that when you split a sticker then it actually resets the animation. So all I do to make them in sync with the letters that they're going to come in on is go ahead and use the playhead movement that we talked about before and then go ahead and split at the playhead. We move to that one, that one, and we just do it and we split it along the way and so we have a bunch of separated instances of this Sublime Sparks. Now we're going to go ahead and start to animate them. 
Before we start keyframing, we want to make sure that our animation is in the initial start place that is correct. Now, if you rewind to the beginning of the animation, sometimes there's nothing there. So you can fast forward and make sure that you got your start point in the right place. Then let's go ahead and just go into our keyframe menu. Remember, that's this little key over here. And as we fast forward, if we pick up and move our animation, then it's going to move to that path. Now really with the A, we're just going to go up and down. So basically about half the amount of time is going to be going up and we just drag it up and place it as best as we can up there. And then towards the, at the end of the animation, we're going to go and we're going to go down to this corner over here. Don't mind the fact that the letters disappear for a second. That's the way that we have it set up and that you can see that we are tracing the A as we go along. All right, we'll go into this this second one is for the S and remember we select it, we bring it over first, we rescale the size of it to what we want, we put it in the proper place where it's going to start and then we start to go ahead and do the keyframes. I'm going to speed up through here, just take one letter at a time, look at what the curves look like, divide it into segments, the S may be about five or six segments, so smaller pieces, more complicated. If you have to undo something, undoing is easier with the undo button I think than it is deleting the little keyframes. Then you just go through each letter and you draw out the sparks on each letter. Remember the most important thing is to start your animation in the right place and have the length of it before you drop your keyframes and you should be good to go. The entire set of letters only took me a few minutes to actually do. The last piece, I wanted this dramatic Kinemaster flying in and hitting on the sharp sound. I'll play it once for you again. That kunk, that almost like a sword smashing or something. And so what I did, first of all, that you'll see is that I placed Kinemaster and I split it in half because I kind of knew that the fly-in was the easy animation, but the second part was going to be a little bit more challenging, so I figure I would do it in two pieces. Now, the one thing of note that I really like here in this is this one really big bounce, and that is literally it scales up in just a millisecond, but you really see it as that kind of like... And it gives kind of a human feel to have it just a little bit back and forth animation between these. And I just literally just scaled up little tiny scale in, scale up, scale in. And so one last time of how it looks like this. It's like almost like it bounces. So I thought that that was a really good dramatic end to this. And so as a recap, it takes a bunch of time, but it comes out really cool. Background animations, uh, focusing people's attention with a keyframed smaller animation and a dramatic end. Everything synced to the beat using bookmarks and you will be in fantastic shape. All right, hopefully with lessons one, two, and three, you have enough to go and make something really cool Hollywood style for your own intro, please. Post it if you make one from what you learn. Get out there and make something awesome with Kinemaster. Remember, I respond and reply. I like to be involved with the community. Type whatever you want. I'll try and get back to you and suggestions, ideas, all of it. See you the next time around on Mastering Kinemaster. Get out there and make something. <laughs>